after stopping the genocide that was going to happen on Joseph 7, everybody looked up to what was left of the battle group left in space from the mutts. As they looked at the giant capital ship that was still mostly intact, everybody realized that it's time to divide up the war spoils. At this point, humanity had gotten used to using the general public to figure things out as you could condense all the smartest people you want and sometimes they just can't figure it out, but some random person just might. And those that seem to understand the tech are immediately brought in to try and figure the rest out. The Sarge himself received all this information inside the Citadel and surrounded himself with the smartest people he could find and tried to figure out how to refit the city that had grown up around the Citadel and use this to make the Citadel stronger, better than it once was. It wasn't long before all these personnel realized what they could do with this new technology, mixing it in with the current technologies they already used, and now, now factories would have to be retold and reprogrammed. The automated assembly lines began to create new products faster and better than even before, and this included personalized frigates. Up until this point, the only thing personalized was only about the size of a Corvette, but now, now they had the tech they needed to make things bigger, stronger. Though the base hull itself would be standardized, everything else could be customized to the customer themselves, and this would allow them to be not only efficient, but work out well for each individual person. This would allow not just the ability to go up into space in your own personal craft, but to live actually comfortably out there in the stars. Along with this, a lot of the personalization came down to weapon systems, and a lot of them. One would think that something like this wouldn't sell very well, but you would be wrong. Even those that could barely even afford it, many took out loans in order to have these ships built. They made sure that they had their own in business. Well, business was booming. The main reason was thanks to this invasion by these freaking dogs. The fire has been lit under the ass of humanity and they want blood. They want enough blood to satiate themselves after watching the young ones be tortured and killed. Mothers being killed just for protecting their young. This was something that was universal to all three species in the Trident. And they all wanted a piece. Hell, they wanted the whole damn thing. During this time, more information about the Mutts came out as they were finally able to decipher the codes inside the systems. And they were able to read the history of these. As it turns out, the Mutts actually had an official name called the Onus. This is actually commonly referred to many as, well, the bitches. Let's go handle these bitches, was all anybody ever said. It turns out they themselves consider themselves warrior species, and act a lot like locusts upon finding a new species to consume. They will simply go in and try to get as much as they can for themselves Seemingly gorging themselves, trying to get as much as possible as they believed if they didn't eat it now, it wouldn't be there. Eventually, the species that they were dining on would run down in numbers, and then they would end up fighting amongst themselves for the scraps. This internal fighting meant that only the strongest of their species would survive after this, and then the strong ones would go out and search for a new species to consume. This semi-nomadic species, these mutts are very powerful, very strong, very aggressive, and that makes them very dangerous. This is why all Trident forces take this threat very, very seriously. They look at a potential battle plan to travel across the void to the Onus homeworld, and unfortunately this travel time would take a few months one way. That is, unless they use the jump gates, but if they use the wrong coordinates, they might end up in the middle of God knows where. This is what happens to the other two species, as it turns out, they're nowhere near their original homeworld. For some reason, there was a resonance that actually drew both of them to Earth, and nobody really knows why just yet. 
Eventually, the plan was developed. The population wanted in and wanted blood. They wanted to be part of this battle. The Clitoris, too, as they had already bled due to the invasion. The Perverde were even more aggressive as they wanted to head out at that very moment and had to be held back and had to be told that you are most likely going to be outnumbered if you just take off half-cocked like that. They wanted to go as they had picked up some human traits and wanted to simply dive in, penetrate the enemy lines, and dump their entire combat load right into the face of the enemy. However, this was not the time to do so. They realized this as it would take at least a decade to rebuild two whole planets and to assemble the fleets, literally put the fleets together, drill everybody, have the battle plans ready, have the supplies, and of course, travel to the area. Eventually, the day of departure could not come soon enough for some. The fleet, made up of a mix of militia and military, jumped into the void. These trident forces going out, looking for a fight. Upon reaching Onas space, Trident forces actually split up to hit the enemy from both sides. The Onas were actually unprepared and didn't know which way to turn. Do they face that large fleet or do they face that large fleet? Yet what they didn't know is it doesn't matter. The Trident forces would actually come in from opposite sides into the Onas fleet, coming out with such force that the Onas could only scream in pain as they bleed being torn apart as the Onus lines are penetrated, broken wide open and torn to pieces from the edge of their lines all the way to the guts of their formation. In response, the Onus turned into little bitches and ran with their tails between the legs, most ships trailing atmosphere or coolant fluids as they ran back to their homeworld. By that point, all the rest of the Onus forces had arrived, outnumbering Trident forces easily seven to one if you add everything from space stations to satellites to civilian frigates to all their military forces. The pack of dogs sat there in the dark right in front of their home, barking and growling insults at the Trident forces all in an attempt to get the Trident forces to drive in so that they could simply envelop the Trident forces and wipe them out. However, if they wanted a response, one should tell them, be careful what you wish for. As the Trident forces finally got into formation and moved forward as one to engage these hounds, the hounds didn't realize that just below the planet's surface, barely one meter, a gate opened, throwing thousands of tons of debris into the air, and right from that opening, thousands of trident vessels splashed across the face of the planet, spreading all the way across. The Onus had too much pride to realize that they're now outnumbered, outmaneuvered, outgunned, and clearly outsmarted, so they simply fought on, firing their weapons randomly into the darkness. Many of these defending ships didn't even realize how bad things were until they got a torpedo penetrating the aft section and erupting inside. At that point, that vessel would either be completely disabled or simply splash in a giant painful firework. The debris field that came from each of these splash made it even more difficult to fight as the sensors couldn't differentiate between what was space junk and what was about to shoot them across the nose. Once the enemy fleet was gone, Trident forces made contact with the leader on the ground, all their ships waiting up in space, looming over them. Anyone on the surface could actually see the silhouettes, and many of them, though barked and growled all their insults to the sky, just about pissed themselves in fear. This is when the Trident forces called down and asked to speak with the leader, the elder, the emperor, whatever you want to call them. To their surprise, they got a response. Though still prideful, the leader of the Onus actually stood there in royal garb on the holonet. He began barking and growling his insults, saying how they would never 
become slaves to anyone and they would fight to the last. They would never beg for scraps at the table of any leaders. They would never do tricks on command and they would never roll over and submit. To their absolute shock, the Trident forces just looked and said, we wouldn't demand that. No, we don't want slaves. And if we wanted you dead, we'd already be dead. So listen up. Everyone on both sides listened very attentively. As it turns out, the terms of surrender, which was enough to make the Onus just very, very pissed off, were very simple, actually. They would be restricted to their current sectors and would no longer expand beyond them. They would also never, ever raise arms against any of the Trident forces ever again unless they are actually engaged from Trident forces. This seemed logical, this seemed simple, and everybody could agree on this. However, the commander of the Onus actually said, Without expansion, how will we survive? They got a simple response. Figure it out. With that, the Onus actually agreed, though very hesitantly, as they realized that if they didn't agree to some sort of armistice, their entire population would be destroyed. Once everything was signed, everything was agreed on, the Trident forces simply left. But they left, leaving a message. The message was simple. Violate the treaty, and we will return. If we have to return, we will actually teach you a new trick. We'll teach you how to play dead. The subtlety in the words was not missed by anybody. It was actually a very interesting video that the Emperor and, of course, all of his council suddenly looked at each other and you could see that they all had their ears perked up and had a complete oh shit look on their face. After all this, the Trident forces simply returned, and peace finally returned with them. And with that peace, there was actually just one more large item. One large item that would reshape the Trident itself down to its very core. As it turned out, while the forces were in their very long flight all the way back to the Soul Sector, the Clitoris and the Prevede both desired one thing. They wanted to go home. They wanted to finally make sure that their families were safe as there was no communications once they had arrived on Earth. They could jump to their planets, but they didn't want to damage any of their own planets in doing so. If they did, it would be seen as an act of aggression and their own people would actually shoot at them before they even realized what was going on. So they would have to do things the hard way, the long way. And by long, this trip will take nine years, one way, even with the best FTL engines they had. And they would have to be in stasis for much of it so they didn't actually go crazy due to boredom out in the void. Not to mention it's a good way to save on resources. Not all of them would leave, of course, but approximately 80% actually wanted to. Most that stayed actually grew up in the Trident and had no interest in actually seeing where they came from, though a few did have some curiosity. When the day came for both species to leave, the Sarge went over to each of his daughters and kissed them goodbye. He smiled like all the others, waving goodbye as they got on the ships and simply waited, standing there as the ship left the planet to dock with a larger ship and got ready to jump. He then watched as the ships left, gripping the hand of the one next to him. Humanity, in a sign of respect, of silent respect, it was something to see as every single ship that was not jumping was lined up in perfect formation as the fleet that was getting ready to jump just got away from the gravity well of the planet and traveled between both rows of these ships. All of them simply there. You could see even on the observation decks, many waving, some saluting, some crying, but all basically saying goodbye, and we'll see you again when you get back. Once the group that was leaving cleared this row of ships, it only took a few moments for all of them to jump to FTL and simply disappear into the darkness. 
after the ship leaves, the Sarge looks up from the edge of the citadel and then turns to the tall, bluish female at his side and says, I hope they get there safe. What the... Oh, I know that look. I've got work to do. You know what? Work can wait. The clitoris female simply looked down into his eyes and said, Of course. Now that we have peace and we don't have to worry about anything, it's time for you to enjoy your spoils of war. Hello everybody, this is Syntex. Thank you so much for joining me today as we check out the spoils of war. Before I go, I need to send some special thank yous to a few of my supporters, and those will be Erica Gem, Guardian Sage, Black Trapper, MTF Guard, Brian Kemp, SS Demon, and Chris Dixon. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. Everybody else, I'll see you on the next one. This is Syntext, punching out.